ಕರುಣಾರ್ಣವಮಾಯ್ ಕರುದಗತಿ ನಲ್ಗು ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಶಿವ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಪ್ರೊಗ್ರೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸೇಷನ್ we go through four different stages and of course we've been over this again and again uh, in the buddhist perspective these are called the four paths the first path is realizing that everything is consciousness everything is brahman second path is realizing that desire is the cause of suffering the third path one realizes that the uh individual personality is a complete fabrication the ego and in the fourth path that fabrication is completely destroyed seen through and understood to be non-existent and not only that never existent <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about third path because third path is something that has come up actually we've talked in some recent videos and conversations live streams about how the individual self the empirical self or the ego is unreal illusory like the whole world uh um uh, because when one thinks the ego is real the world also appears real and when one sees through the illusion of the ego one also sees through the illusion of the world so they go hand in hand together it just depends on how you want to approach it do you want to uh work on the idea that the world is illusory or do you want to take it from the point of view that the ego is illusory it's up to you either way third path means you see through it all and that's a very interesting moment because for the first time you have the ability to choose which mask you're going to wear Are you going to be a happy person? Are you going to be basically a benevolent person? Or are you going to be a serious <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. Serious or tragic boohoo, you know, or angry. Uh what is going to be your persona? What is going to be the face or the mask? that you choose to present to the world because one of the things that you realize that comes home very powerfully in fourth path realization is that you need an ego to deal with the world if you don't have one you become like a baby you know anybody can exploit you or do anything they want to you so to defend yourself you need some personality but because you realize it's an illusion you know it's a false personality you get to choose you get to fabricate synthesize or create whatever kind of mask you want to wear so we see great personalities like ramana maharshi and so and so many others they adopt the persona of compassion compassion means i care about your spiritual advancement because in this world we have to do something nobody can remain without doing something even for a moment 
Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Huh? And because of that, and because we will be held responsible for our actions, even though they're temporary and illusory, uh, by the law of karma, we have to experience the result. So therefore, we should reduce as far as possible the actions performed for selfish purpose. And we should, as much as possible, act for the benefit of others. This is really the essence of karma yoga, which we've been talking about now for a few weeks, a couple of weeks. Karma yoga means performing actions that lead to enlightenment. And of course, since the cause of falling away from enlightenment or being covered over by illusion is that we act out of desire the only desire that could lead us toward enlightenment is for the benefit of all beings. And of course, this is famous as the Bodhisattva vow. Uh, Bodhisattva, well, it gets a little extreme. With some of the Buddhists, they say, let me remain in samsara until all beings attain enlightenment. Well, you know, don't hold your breath. <laughs> because the vast majority of beings don't want enlightenment. They don't want to eliminate the ego or destroy their individuality and merge with the whole. They want to be an individual. And that reminds me of a, a great clip from this video, The Sunshine Makers, huh? this animated video from the 50s. I'm going to play just a few seconds of it here. I don't want to be happy. I want to be sad. I don't want to be happy. I want to be happy. I want to be glad. I want to be happy and glad and never again be sad. So the point is, there are people in this world who, well, maybe it's not as direct as saying, I want to be sad. I don't want to be happy. Uh, but maybe they're just saying, I want what I want. <laughs> I want my desires. Not realizing due to their intelligence being covered by upadis of individuality and desire and memories and habits and so on, the desires of the senses and all this, they don't realize that following these desires is going to lead to suffering. And even if they are suffering, they don't want to give it up. Why? because it's my suffering. <laughs> They're attached to it. It's who they are. So even though people suffer because of bad habits like drinking and chasing the opposite sex and so on, they keep it up because that's their identity. That's how they know who they are. So they're, they're wearing a mask, but with them, it's involuntary. It's a habit. It's not something they're in control of. And so they project on the whole world and say, I'm suffering because of you <laughs> or because of the way the world is or because of the situation or something or other. But I think it was Werner Erhardt, or maybe a philosopher that he studied, said that pain is inevitable. Suffering is a choice. We get to choose how we respond to the things that happen to us. We get to choose the mask that we wear and present to the world as being myself. 
So anyone with intelligence, anyone with good ethics, anyone with integrity is going to want to present a mask or a face to the world that is going to aid the living beings and help them to get free from this illusion. I can remember so many times, especially when I was young, walking down the street and seeing all these people with sad and angry and victim faces, huh? feeling that, oh, these poor people are suffering so much. What can I do to help them? But every time I tried, because I didn't have very much knowledge in those days, every time I tried, it failed. Or it even uh, turned into some ugly situation because I wasn't properly approaching people with real knowledge. I was just basically trying to get them to see things the way I saw them. And of course, that doesn't work because they're not ready. Uh, I remember Maharshi Mahesh Yogi said to a friend of mine who asked him, uh, what is the ultimate truth? And Maharshi just kind of giggled, you know, that trademark laugh of his? <laughs> You're not ready yet. <laughs> You're not ready yet. Because, why? He was attached to his ego. He was attached to thinking, I am Mr. So-and-so, and this is my life, and this is my actions, and this is my karma, and my body, and so on. But actually, it's not like that. And when we reach third path, it becomes absolutely clear that it's not like that. <laughs> that we do have a choice that we don't have to suffer, even though we might be feeling some pain. Because the nectar of compassion heals all pain, not only in others, but in ourselves. There are two words from the Buddha's teaching, metta and mudita. Metta means to wish all good to others. May you be happy. May you have everything you need. May you not be subject to any restrictions in your activities. May you attain full enlightenment, and so on and so forth. And mudita means when we see others' enjoyment, we feel happy. This is completely the opposite of the ordinary person who, when he sees others enjoying, feels jealous or envious. And the difference is, if they're happy because they have something that I used to have or could have, then I'm jealous. But if I see someone being happy because they have something or am doing something that I can't, that I'm unable to, that's envy. For example, when we see someone who's very intelligent, we may think, oh boy, that guy is so, you know, such a know-it-all, you know. Well, you could be a know-it-all too. <laughs> but you think you can't. So you envy him instead. The Buddha once said, jealousy, envy, and hatred are like taking poison and wishing the other person would die. <laughs> of course, that's ridiculous. But so are envy, jealousy, and hatred. One simply has to see that the mask we wear, the personality that we adopt, the face that we show to the world is something completely up to us. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shaktihi Aung.